The Long Road by Wolflin. Chapter 5 Forge Pokemon Trainer's Handbook, page 15. The path of a trainer doesn't always go through the Pokemon League. Breeders, rangers, coordinators, and other related occupations all require the training skills necessary to form strong bonds with Pokemon. There was something about Lily Cove City that gave it a sense of calm despite it being the most populated city in Hoenn. Stephen had visited Lily Cove several times with his father when he was younger, but exploring the city by himself for the first time made it feel fresh and new. The city itself was spread out over a majority of the rolling coastline, so even though it was lively, it never felt cramped or suffocating. There was always a place to duck out of the hustle and bustle to just sit and relax. And Stephen was ready to do just that, as he stepped out of the Lily Cove department store, fully restocked and donning a sleek new jacket. He smiled as he took a deep breath of the salty air. Having grown up in Rasboro, he was no stranger to living in a port city, but he always loved how the air in Lily Cove just felt so much cleaner and more refreshing. Sensing that their trainer's errands were done for the day, Steven's team rattled and their Pokeballs at his hip. Resting a light hand on his belt, he chuckled. <laughs> Soon, you guys. It's too busy to let you out here, so you'll have to wait until we get to the beach. Steven had promised to treat his team to an afternoon at the shore when they left the Poke Center that morning. They could all use a day off, and Steven owed them for looking after him during the aftermath of the Route 121 debacle. But after a morning of shopping for supplies, they were getting anxious. At Steven's insistence, they quieted down while he searched for the best path that would take them to the water's edge. Stepping off the bustling sidewalk, Steven opted for a more meandering tree-lined path. As he strolled along the quiet pathway, he caught glimpses of the main thoroughfare. While it was normally bustling with activity on any given day, Today appeared to be more lively than usual. Not normally interested in seeking out a crowd, today Stephen's curiosity got the better of him. He was relatively sure his team would forgive him for a slight detour, so he ducked down the next alley and poked his head out into the street where he was greeted with a festive sight. Colorful banners fluttered from the light poles, and ribbons adorned various storefronts. People and Pokemon filled the streets. Some people hung back for some window shopping, but most of the traffic seemed to flow in the direction of the lower port. Stephen craned his head in that direction to see what all the commotion was about, but the sea of people was too thick for him to glean anything useful. He'd never been terribly comfortable with the idea of large crowds, but his curiosity was outweighing any apprehension he might have felt. So... With one hand resting reassuringly on Matang's Pokeball, he steeled his nerves and slipped into the crowd, milling his way towards the center of the excitement. As Stephen followed the flow of people towards the southern end of the city, a large building came into view. Also adorned in the colorful decor, the structure's sweeping roof seemed to tower over the vibrant crowds. A seemingly endless stream of visitors moved in and out of the glass doors that sat squarely beneath a large sign declaring the building as the Lily Cove Contest Hall. His eyes widened at the grandeur of it all. Now, he had heard of contests before, having seen other contest halls in various cities during his journey. But none of them had ever been this large or this busy. As he stood taking it all in, an unusual pair of figures brushed by, catching his attention. Stephen discovered he wasn't the only one who had noticed, as a murmur passed through the crowd. There was a very good reason the duo stood out so much. Dressed far too formally to be a mere tourist, the young, teal-haired boy's cape fluttered in the breeze when he wove his way past where Stephen had stopped. Accompanying the boy was an older gentleman, dressed equally as splendid. 
and Stephen found himself frowning as a spark of recognition dawned in the back of his mind. He racked his brain, trying to recall where he'd seen the older man before. And then it hit him. He held a striking resemblance to a photo he'd seen of Juan, the gym leader of Citopolis City. Stephen watched as other people in the crowd stopped to stare as the pair made their way towards the contest hall. If that really was Juan, what would a gym leader be doing at a Pokemon contest? From everything he had heard, most trainers who were involved in the Pokemon League Challenge didn't care for contest spectaculars, and contest performers generally weren't interested in Pokemon battling. Steven knew he fell into the former category, but if Juan had taken an interest in contests, perhaps the gym leader felt they held some merit when translated from stage to battlefield. As Steven puzzled over the possibilities of the value of contest moves and battle tactics, the quiet murmur of the crowd rose back to a dull roar, and a voice sounded loud and clear from just over his shoulder. There you are! I've been looking all over for you! Steven was perfectly content to ignore this voice, since there logically couldn't have been anyone looking for him in this city. But he wasn't able to ignore the hand that grabbed him by the arm and began to drag him in the direction of the hall. Wait a minute! He protested as he was tugged along, but the portly woman who had him by the wrist didn't spare a glance. No waiting! You're running late as it is! If you don't hurry, the registration will close before you get there! Registration? The lady's voice grew more flustered with every step. Oh, honey! The registration for your contest, of course! You can't just waltz right in there and participate without signing up! That blasted contest pass wouldn't allow online registration ahead of time! By now, the woman had dragged him across the plaza, through the front doors, and across the main lobby of the hall. Stephen, try as he might, could not free his hand from the lady's vice-like grip. He was running out of time to clear up the misunderstanding as they were rapidly approaching the front desk. I believe you've got the wrong- Here we are! Now, Jeffrey, give the nice receptionist your ID card! And he was roughly shoved forward towards the counter. Stephen froze as he was trapped between the desk and his captor. He didn't need to look to know she was standing behind him. He could hear her breath right next to his ear. He offered his best look of panic confusion to the receptionist, and at his expression, she skeptically turned her eyes up to the woman looming over his shoulder. Ma'am, is this your son? Why, of course this is my son! Can't you see the resemblance? And at that, the woman finally glanced down at the frazzled trainer she'd snatched off the street and realized her mistake. Good heavens! You're not my Jeffrey! And without even offering an apology, she dashed back out of the contest hall in search of her actual son. Stephen finally dared to move, and he glanced up at the face of his savior. She offered him a friendly smile. I thought I recognized you. You're President Stone's boy, aren't you? He used to stay at the inn where I worked, and I remembered your face from the pictures he showed me. He would talk about you all the time. The receptionist beamed down at him. Although, registration already closed for the last contest in the youth division, so there's no way you'd have gotten to participate anyway. I mean, unless you wanted to. But the vigorous shaking of Steven's head confirmed her assumption, and she laughed. Well then, I'm glad to have helped clear that up. Although, since you're here, you might as well stick around to watch. The contests are pretty fun. I think you'll enjoy them. Here, take this pass and you'll be able to get into the main contest hall. She smiled again when Stephen began to dig for his wallet. My treat! To make up for that little misunderstanding. Stephen nodded slowly and accepted the pass the receptionist offered. The youth division contests start in 20 minutes through those doors. She smiled as she gestured to the wall behind her. I hope you enjoy the show! Still rattled, Stephen managed to find his manners and offered a bow. He hadn't planned on actually watching any of the contests, 
but with the pass in hand and the threat of the crazy lady looming outside, he uttered a quick thank you and ducked into the hall.